Chapter 2381 Primordial Bloodline, Ultimate Journey Three months had passed in the blink of an eye, Qing Shui and Nailin Qing's marriage had also taken place. However, not long after, Nailin Qing left a note stating that she'd be leaving for a while and for him not to worry. It was a trip which the ancient blue topaz leopard had insisted on. Qing Shui didn't worry either since she was accompanied by the ancient blue topaz leopard. The ancient blue topaz leopard was formidable and had increased its strength tremendously with the help of medicinal pills after it became Nailin Qing's pet. Furthermore, Nailin Qing's strength wasn't anything to scoff at either. Qing Shui gave her several protective items which would protect her even in the upper three regions. Though strong warriors wouldn't be able to touch her as they pleased. Qing Shui's demonic beasts weren't the ancient blue topaz leopards match either, with a huge discrepancy between them. However, he had been refining a few dozen blood strengthening pills during this period, most of them attained through miraculous effort. The golden scaled dragon elephant had the strongest blood now, reaching 51% primordial bloodline when it had only been a little more than 20% before. 51% was a critical point. The primordial bloodline was said to be one of the strongest. Now that the golden scaled dragon elephant's power had grown exponentially, its disposition was no longer like in the past. Its entire body was evolving subtly. Primordial dragon elephant? The primordial dragon elephant they saw now was no longer the secondary bloodline of the golden scaled dragon elephant from before. Now, the latter had vanished, leaving only the primordial dragon elephant. This was caused by the change in the dragon elephant's blood. Perhaps the most outstanding change that happened to the primordial dragon elephant was its abilities, it was now practically capable of turning heaven and earth upside down. This made Qing Shui believe more firmly in his own thoughts, which was to strengthen the blood of his demonic beasts. This was just fundamental for them, as the innate talent and skills all came from the purity of their blood. The dragon elephant's power rose from the ashes on the ground, reaching 5 trillion Dao. The primordial dragon elephant had likewise experienced some changes to its appearance. It still retained its golden color, but the scales were gone. Now it was gold-plated smooth skin. It didn't increase in size, on the contrary, it seemed smaller than before. The primordial dragon elephant was about 50 meters in length but looked extremely skilled with some of its abilities going through significant changes. It had a reduction in functions, but it was completely different from before. Primordial dragon elephant 51% Primordial Bloodline Primordial Bloodline was the origin of the Primordial Dragon Elephant's powers. It reduced the overall damage to its body by 20%, increasing 20% of its own attacks while negating 30% of any adverse effects to its body. There was a 30% increase in its elemental resistance alongside the threefold recovery on its vitality. Additionally, its defense and toughness soared by 30% also increasing the speed and evasion by 50%. The primordial bloodline's purity had to break through a certain threshold before the abilities could be upgraded. Qing Shui saw a glimpse of the primordial divine beast's power and knew that the primordial dragon elephant had grown stronger. This primordial bloodline was simply terrifying. Before, the primordial dragon elephant had only borne the so-called primordial bloodline essence in its body and couldn't have been counted as having the primordial bloodline. Thanks to Qing Shui, its primordial bloodline essence seemed to have increased by a lot, reaching a certain threshold. This phenomenon had caused a transformation in the primordial dragon elephant's might and appearance. It had had approximately 20% of primordial bloodline before, and that amount could only be called as blood essence. Now that it had reached over 51%, it could be addressed as the legitimate primordial bloodline. Hence, it was only natural that its powers had transformed. Besides the primordial bloodline, primordial dragon elephant's battle techniques had slight changes as well. Mighty dragon elephant stomp, grand perfection stage the aggressive attacks upon the ground have a certain probability in causing vertigo, causing numbness in its targets, hindering their movements. Instantaneous diamond evasion, able to take a leap within 5 kilometers in an instant. Ferocious dragon elephant attack, attack a single target in an instant. This attack increases the penetration power and critical rate, with a small probability in bypassing defense. Primordial Flames Primordial flames under the dragon elephant's feet would bring about a 30% chance of breaking through armor, increasing its speed in the air at the same time. Primordial Body Can attack any types of existences, increasing its body's resistance at the same time. 
Ching Shui heaved a breath of relief. This was the result after consuming nearly 30 blood strengthening pills, and it had distanced itself greatly from Dark Phoenix, Diamond White Tiger King, and Dragon Spider. Even the Black Ice Divine Worms wouldn't be a match to the primordial dragon elephant now. Among Ching Shui's demonic beasts, the dragon slaying beast had a decent amount of primordial bloodline. After all, it had eaten almost half of the primordial golden bear's heart and primordial bloodline awakening pills, which had awoken the dragon slaying beast's primordial bloodline. With time, the beast's primordial bloodline had reached to a shocking 15%. The other demonic beasts weren't of primordial bloodline, and Ching Shui had no intention of changing it for now. After all, not just any beasts could possess the primordial bloodline. The golden-scaled dragon elephant was an exception because it had devoured the primordial boar, while the dragon-slaying beast had feasted on the primordial golden bear's heart. Ching Shui refined several primordial bloodline awakening pills then gave them to his own demonic beasts. However, as time passed, the primordial bloodline they gained from it was gradually disappearing. Now, he understood this aspect of it. Changes in blood couldn't be judged upon first awakening. He must also consider the fusing rate between the beast's blood and primordial bloodline. Ching Shui gave the remaining blood strengthening pills to Dragon Spider, as it was the only one left among his demonic beasts which fit the criteria. However, Dragon Spider only had 1% primordial bloodline in it as of now, 1% was like a seedling and crucial. However, Dragon Spider had been awoken to 1% at that time, and it remained that way until now. This meant that she had a chance of purifying its bloodline, though it was hard to say to what extent. The rest of the demonic beasts had none of the primordial bloodline left after their initial awakening. It was said that they might transform if they could reach the bottom line of 10% purity, but awakening usually only resulted in 1% of purity before one could find a way to increase it. But even in this case, a year's time was needed before they could start to increase it. Unless one was like the primordial dragon elephant which had devoured a primordial bloodline demonic beast. However, this way possessed more dangers and risks. It would also seem a bit wasteful and inefficient. For example, devouring a beast with 15% primordial bloodline would perhaps only increase the primordial bloodline by 5%. All in all, it was all up to chance. The prime example was the dragon spider which retained 1% of primordial bloodline even after a year. Having consumed the pills, the dragon spider showed off her absorption abilities which made Ching Shui drop his jaw. The remaining 20 pills had increased its bloodline by 20% on top of its initial 1% from the awakening. This meant that it had reached 21% of primordial bloodline. This was a critical point. The difference between 21% and 20% was drastic, just like the difference between the lower three regions and the middle three regions. Nine-headed demonic dragon spider. 21% primordial bloodline. Dragon Spider's appearance had some changes as well. It was still silver white in color without much changes to its size. However, its body seemed smooth as jade even though it didn't have an outer shell anymore. Its defense was even more terrifying now. Chapter 2382 Ching Shui's First Leap. Just by its aura, you could tell that Dragon Spider was much stronger than before. Ching Shui couldn't help but put on a satisfied smile after seeing Dragon Spider's strength and battle techniques. Dragon Spider's power reached 2 trillion Dao. Ching Shui had long since expected this amount of power. After all, the primordial dragon elephant had 5 trillion Dao at 51% of primordial blood. However, in truth, Ching Shui wasn't actually sure if this battle prowess was considered normal for the Dragon Spider. Nevertheless, he was satisfied with the strength it achieved. Nine-headed demonic dragon spider, 21% primordial bloodline. Primordial blood was the origin of the nine-headed demonic dragon spider's powers. It reduced damage to its body by 35%, negating 40% of any adverse effects. There was a 40% increase in resistance alongside the double recovery on its vitality. Additionally, its defense and toughness soared by 40% also increasing the speed and evasion by 50%. The primordial bloodline's purity had to break through a certain threshold before the abilities could be upgraded. With 21% of primordial blood, it didn't seem inferior at all compared to the primordial dragon elephant with 51% of primordial blood. However, it was evident that dragon spider didn't receive any advantage to its attacks but was stronger than the primordial dragon elephant in other areas. 
This was the unique aspect of control type demonic beasts. Dragon Spider was now called Nine-Headed Demonic Dragon Spider and not Primordial Dragon Spider. This might be because of its lower bloodline purity and besides, it was just a name. In Ching Shui's eyes, nothing would change even if it was a Primordial Dragon Spider because it would always just be Dragon Spider for him. Poison Web Entanglement The Nine-Headed Dragon Spider's inescapable net will bring about corrosive poison, stickiness, and strong entanglement with its attack. It will reduce the target's speed while being unable to twist out of it. Poison Silk Tentacle The nine-headed dragon spider can attack from afar with poisonous silk and wrap around its victim. Its speed is extremely fast with increased venom and stickiness in the silk, reducing even more speed while the target is unable to twist out of it. Spider Silk Sky Net Passive Technique with Zero Energy Exhaustion Forming a huge net around the area in an instant, Anything inside it would reduce in speed while the dragon spider's speed doubles. Sharpness, the nine-headed dragon spider's sharpness of its eight legs was unmatched, in addition to having extremely strong poison and piercing effects. Unyielding shield, the defense of the nine-headed dragon spider is exceptionally strong. Body regeneration, a damaged body could be regenerated, requiring a hundred days at maximum. This could be shortened with an increase in primordial blood and abilities. Divine Spider Thread, allow the Nine-Headed Dragon Spider's stickiness and toughness to increase significantly. A passive ability. Ching Shui smiled. Nalan Ching and Bai Huang Fan had both received the ancient Blue Topaz Leopards back then. They were still stronger than Ching Shui's demonic beasts. However, that was completely alright for him. Now, his primordial Dragon Elephant and Dragon Spiders were both formidable as well, because he still had the Spirit Gathering Lamp and the Heaven Shaking Drum. Primordial Dragon Elephant and Dragon Spider's abilities doubled. With Ching Shui's abilities, their strength would be even more terrifying, especially the Primordial Dragon Elephant. It would be able to face off against a lot of enemies head-on. As for Primordial Dragon Spider, it was half assassin type and half control type, its attacks would be able to counter against omnipotent beasts. This was the result of Ching Shui's work in these three months. The blood strengthening pill was not meant to be finished all at once. And even with his Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal's ability, it would take three months to create some. Without it, it would take decades to a century. It was what made blood strengthening a difficult feat. Besides, it wasn't that easy to refine ancient pure-blooded demonic beasts. It would take much effort with low probability. Ching Shui wouldn't have been able to do it without the primordial demon refining furnace, either. All of it still made Ching Shui feel elated. He considered himself fortunate thinking that all these were the coincidences and arrangements from the heavens. It was natural that one would stand taller with the increment in power. However, Ching Shui could still remember the words from the chief of Peach Blossom City. As his father was the ruler of the Forsaken Heaven region, it would have been a lie to claim that Ching Shui wasn't worried about it. To be the ruler of the Forsaken Heaven region was equivalent to being the ruler of the Middle Three Regions. Ching Shui had far surpassed the Lower Three Regions ruler. The divine rain sect. Nevertheless, he didn't think he would incur the wrath of middle three regions ruler this quickly. Of course, Ching Shui couldn't be sure if the ruler of the forsaken heaven region was on the same level as the forces of the middle three region. He could only speculate. He noted that there wasn't much time left, and he would do his best to survive the impending crisis. Just a while after exiting the realm of the violet jade immortal, the morning sun rose from the east. As it splayed across his body, he felt an indescribable sense of calmness, free from troubles. Standing amidst the morning breeze, watching the rising sun, there was a feeling in his heart that he couldn't put a finger on. A feeling he couldn't describe. He felt the beauty and goodness of this boundless, beautiful world. He was just like a man who had climbed to the peak of the mountain and witnessed its breathtaking scenery. Yet, it felt empty, not just the surrounding but in his heart. What are you thinking about? You've been looking dazed for a while. Bai Huang Fan saw Ching Shui frozen at his spot as she walked out and couldn't help but ask. There was a type of magnetism and wonder to her voice that enriched his thoughts, like reaching the peak with someone's company. At this moment, there was an elevation, chasing away the melancholy in his heart. He turned back towards the beauty. I was thinking of you, liar. Bai Huang Fan smiled. Come on, let's take a stroll. Ching Shui was feeling exceptionally happy as he tugged by Huang Fan along to a nearby mountain peak. In his past life, he would have to ascend the mountain early in the morning to watch the sunrise. 
Now though, they could reach it in an instant, and any of the mountains here were several times greater than the famed ones in his past life. Additionally, no one in his previous life would have dared to climb such mountains. They wouldn't be able to breathe on the way up. It was different in nine continents, the air at the top didn't change. The gusts of wind were stronger at the peak of the mountain. They both stood at the viewing deck made of an extended rock platform, facing towards the east. Timid people wouldn't have dared to stand on the edge. After all, with the strong gusts of wind, they might be blown off it if they weren't careful. It was a bottomless pit below. Ching Shui and Bai Huang Fan stood with their clothes ruffling in the wind as though they were about to fly up into the sky. Ching Shui didn't take off his clothes to cover Bai Huang Fan up. It would have been useless with what he was wearing so he just held her a little tighter. The wind here wasn't cold, and with their abilities, they wouldn't feel cold even in places at negative thousand degrees. The morning sun rose. The scenery could be seen almost every day, but it still felt beautiful, making the people appreciate the opportunity to live. Are we leaving again? asked Bai Huang Fan. Ching Shui nodded. Yep, to the Forsaken Earth region. I don't think she's at the Forsaken Earth region. Ching Shui knew Bai Huang Fan was referring to Tantai Linjian. Let's go since it's on the way. We'll check if there are any demon gates or divine palaces. We would have to pass by it anyway and won't stay long even in the Forsaken Heaven region. Ching Shui considered his increase in powers and thought it was time to advance into the upper three regions. Tantai Linjian might be in the Forsaken Heaven region, or perhaps she was at the upper three regions. There weren't only two objectives for him. He wanted to search for Tantai Linjian while strengthening the Divine Palace and suppressing the Demon Gate. However, it seemed like those two wouldn't be easy. He had to be wary of the Forsaken Heaven region's ruler and the Poison Wolf King. He didn't know when he would meet the latter either. So, he could only prepare for the worst. Chapter 2383 Arrival at the Forsaken Earth Region, Dark Fatty The returns were still substantial this time around. Ching Shui received 180 billion Dao force, reaching 480 billion Dao in might. Ching Shui's might was now at 480 billion Dao and 4.8 trillion Dao of defense. The Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Defense increased it by about 20%, and so he reached 5.86 trillion Dao. The Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and the Perry Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda added another 480 billion Dao of resistance. Ching Shui ended up with 6.34 trillion Dao of defense. Ching Shui's divine weapon, flying swords could additionally reduce damage by 5.4 billion Dao, which contributed to his defense, increasing it to approximately 6.3454 trillion Dao. In addition, the attributes of the battle god Halo, his formations, area dominance, and battle techniques allowed Ching Shui to take his defense to another level. This was his defense, the terrifying factor of Ching Shui's stellar transpositions might. The ability was the scariest in that it could bypass defense and cause damage. Moreover, with his emperor's might brilliant Dao and royal's Qi pellet, it would be almost impossible for him to be suppressed by someone's aura. Hence, his stellar transposition would be a huge threat even for people who were stronger than Ching Shui. Apart from that, there was also the Berserk Dragon Fist. Its might had also developed with its attack surpassing 9 trillion Dao. This was all thanks to the Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagoda of Violence and the Vitality Treasure Pagoda. The others didn't have an effect as they were already an add-on. Ching Shui improved and so had the others, especially Massacre Battle God and Co. Massacre Battle God progressed the fastest and treated Ching Shui like his master. What he had now was all given by Ching Shui. Not just Massacre Battle God, there was still Frail Battle God and the others who achieved what they had because of him. It was no wonder that Massacre Battle God was one of the strongest battle gods, though his abilities were still a far cry from Ching Shui's at this moment. After all, Ching Shui had just made a drastic progress, but he would soon catch up to Ching Shui. Besides Massacre Battle God, the others were making great progress as well. Ching Shui had some pellets which they could use when the time came. He also taught them some of the fist techniques without reservation. For example, Massacre Battle God picked up Wind Whisk Willow and improved his battle abilities by leaps and bounds. Their group was growing stronger. With the combination of Ching Shui's supplementary abilities, they weren't all that far behind anymore. This was also the reason for Ching Shui's decision to leave. Crystal City was like a dream. It was incomparably beautiful, but it wasn't a reason for him to stop either. However, 
He might make a trip back here someday or even relocate the Qing clan to this area. Qing Shui didn't encounter any great demons at the Demon King domain, even they were avoiding Qing Shui. He speculated that this generation of gifted demons weren't at the Demon King domain anymore, either. They might have advanced towards the Forsaken Earth region, the Forsaken Heaven region, or maybe even the upper three regions. Qing Shui bid his farewell to the Water Emperor. He was now the son-in-law of the Water Emperor, and the Water Nation was well fortified now. Nobody within the Water Nation would be able to shake the Nalan clan's position. It was a pity that Qing Shui had yet to meet the Water Nation's guardian beast, the Crystal Dragon. Forsaken Earth region? He returned home for a few days after his departure. With the convenience, Qing Shui had been returning frequently during this period as well. Hence, right after he returned to the Demon King domain, Qing Shui advanced towards the Forsaken Earth region. Qing Shui wished to head straight to the Forsaken Heaven region. However, he was thinking of exploring a bit while he still had the stamina to do so. Chaos City wasn't anywhere near the Forsaken Earth region. However, as it was near the north, it wasn't long before he left the Demon King domain and entered that area between the two. This time, Qing Shui brought everyone from the Divine Palace. Nailin Qing had left but if she had stayed, Qing Shui would have brought her along, too. Unless Nailin Qing didn't want to, of course. The area between the two domains was extremely dangerous, but it was nothing to Qing Shui and his companions. The demonic beasts in this area were powerful, but they were still drastically lacking against those found within the divine area. The demonic beasts were swept aside by them. Now, Primordial Dragon Elephant, Dragon Spider, and Bai Huang Fan's ancient blue topaz leopard had practically dominated the place. Even a beast tide would be exterminated to a flat land by them. This wouldn't have been possible in the past. After all, the sheer number of beasts in a beast tide would have swallowed them. Two months had passed when they, at last, spotted the hazy silhouette of the Forsaken Earth region. This was obviously only achievable with the effort of the Nine Continents steps, all relying on Qing Shui's ability. The rest of the time was spent on cultivating. Actually, some of the stronger warriors had treasures like Qing Shui's Nine Continents steps boots, such as a deluxe version of the Shrinking Ruler. The Shrinking Ruler was a common divine artifact in the main continent, used to hasten the journey of cultivators. The lower grade ones could advance by a thousand miles with each use, once every hour. Those of higher grade could cover tens to hundreds of miles with a variety of cooldown periods between uses. They could only be used to hasten journeys, and the cooldown between each use would usually be about a minute or so. Apart from that, there was also the assistance of teleportation formations. Actually, there was one between the Demon King domain and the Forsaken Earth region, but Qing Shui didn't use it. With his current strength, he should have been able to do it. However, he had the Nine Continents steps, and there was no harm in delaying their journey. The extra time could be used to train, to teach those around him new knowledge. Who knows, maybe they would stumble upon something good on their way, too. Unfortunately, they didn't stumble upon luck on their way and could already spot a city by the edge of the Forsaken Earth region from afar. It was huge and magnificent. Even though it was at the edge, it didn't affect its grandeur. Places at the edge usually belonged to two extremes, they either flourished or were sunk in poverty. The mountains were too high, and their rulers were too far away. Hence, it was beyond their means to help. Which was why its progress was dependent on their residents' effort. Boulder City? That was the city's name, and it looked just as dignified and extravagant. They used boulders, a type of extremely sturdy rock, to build it up. This was especially the case for boulders in the Nine Continents, and architecture was likewise its greatest usage. Boulder City was a flourishing city. Qing Shui could feel its profound aura the moment they stepped into it. It was an aura of history and culture. Even though they were at the outer edge, the city was bustling and he could even feel that they all had some form of cultivation. It was common to witness such a scene in cities on the fringe. Those who stayed here would usually have cultivation. People would usually leave after some time, along with some cases of casualties. Hence, the number of people without cultivation would slowly dwindle with time. If that was the case, then the number of people should have likewise decreased. In actuality, the reason for such a bustling crowd was the transient population among them. There was a never-ending crowd of people heading in and out of the city, merchants, warriors, adventurers, hunters, those studying away from home, and so on. Qing Shui and his company didn't stick out like a sore thumb in Boulder City. 
The two women had already done something akin to bamboo hats. Shielding their beauty could save them some trouble as well. Not that Ching Shui was afraid of it, but neither did he wish to deal with unnecessary troubles. Members of Demon Gate Ching Shui observed a middle-aged fatty from afar, a dark fatty. He didn't expect to find a Demon King inheritor in Boulder City. Chapter 2384 Black Diamond Demon King, Heavenly Dance Battle God Tang Shi The middle-aged fatty was about two and a half meters tall, sticking out among the crowd of people. Height of people in this world was about the same as in his previous life, however, there were still great disparities. For example, there was no lack of people at the height of three meters, and there were also many who only stood at a meter high. Where they were at though, the fatty was the tallest without a doubt. His skin was exceptionally dark as well, comparable to the ethnically dark-skinned people in his previous life. Ching Shui and his companions followed the dark fatty from a distance. After all, they didn't know what the stranger was up to, but Ching Shui soon realized after identifying the dark fatty, Black Diamond Demon King Inheritor. Perhaps he knew the dark fatty's title, but he didn't know exactly what the latter was planning to do. Although Ching Shui did have the knowledge of this Black Diamond Demon King's style, as well as his requisites for advancing in power, the Black Diamond Demon King stared at a large silhouette from afar. It had a nickname from ancient times, known as Black, Lecherous, Demon. This was because his technique was similar to harvesting women, it was a sort of demon gate technique which helped to gather and supplement him with energy. Black Diamond Demon King inheritors were tall and muscular with a dark skin, robust in appearance. Any woman chosen would die on the spot, actually not from harvesting but from pain. Pursuance of a narrow gain while neglecting a greater danger? Naturally, Ching Shui resembled the greater danger, and he was confident with that title. This was the Forsaken Earth region. Even if it was his first time here, he could still feel that there weren't many who could be up against him even implying that those few existed was a humble gesture on his part. Ching Shui noticed the woman ahead as well and froze. Their situation seemed to have taken a turn for the better, the woman ahead was a battle god inheritor and a strong one at that. Ching Shui speculated that the black fatty wasn't her match. Heavenly dance battle god inheritor, heavenly dance battle god. This battle god's strength was in her dance the heavenly dance. It was as much a dance as it was a technique, much like Wind Whisk Willow except the former was much stronger. Due to the enchanting element of the heavenly dance, it was easy for one to be lost in its elegance, captivated by its moves. Besides the heavenly dance, this battle god was skilled in assassination, poison, enchantment, and the like. This was a battle god which inclined towards assassination, just like how the massacre battle god was inclined to open slaughter. That being said, the heavenly dance battle god wasn't an assassin. The inheritor would only slay murderers without even them realizing the dawning of their deaths. Ching Shui grew even more intrigued by the situation. Furthermore, the presence of a battle god meant the existence of a divine palace. He supposed this woman would be his gateway to visit the divine palace. This was Boulder City, the furthest city in the border of the Forsaken Earth region. That fact alone was why Ching Shui hadn't expected the existence of the Demon Gate and the Divine Palace. The Heavenly Dance Battle God seemed oblivious to the enemy following behind her. She walked and stopped, purchasing little trinkets along the way. From afar, she seemed young with a good figure and tall stature. She looked gentle with exquisite features and impeccable mannerisms. At the very least, she was as beautiful as Nyo Lan. Big Brother Ching Shui, don't compete with me to snatch women this time around. I don't have any women beside me now, and I want to woo her, Hao Tian spoke up abruptly. Ching Shui rubbed his forehead. When have I ever snatched a woman from you? Woo whoever you please. Ching Shui was speechless while the other two women smiled at him. Keek, I promise I won't ever. No promises needed, and we wouldn't interfere either. Woo whoever you please. Bai Huang Fan smiled. That's right. I can even help you in getting those you can't. Shen Huang added. Ching Shui knew that the two women were just saying this casually, but he hadn't expected the humor from Shen Huang and rubbed his nose awkwardly. Not only are these sisters-in-law beautiful, but their graciousness is impressive too. Brother, you will have no regrets in this lifetime no, you won't have any regrets even if you are single in the next life too, Hao Tian said with envy. Maybe you were like me in your previous life. Hao Tian blinked and said, you shouldn't joke like this. The rest broke into laughter. Diamond Battle God rubbed his head and laughed. Then, Hao Tian wouldn't have any regrets even if he is single for this lifetime. 
Unwittingly, they arrived at a secluded area. The heavenly dance battle god halted in her steps and spoke without turning back. Black demon, are you still not going to make your appearance after following me for so long? Her voice was crisp and as melodic as wind chimes, incredibly pleasant to the ears. Hao Tian grew even more agitated. She's mine. Mine. Don't you dare snatch her. Ching Shui chose to ignore it and pretend he didn't hear a thing. Hee hee, seems like I'm blessed today. So are you, Tang Shi. Dark Fatty appeared with a lewd smile on his face. You managed to flee last time. I'd love to see how you can pull that off this time, Heavenly Dance Battle God, Tang Shi, replied coldly. Flee? Why would I flee? I can't wait to be near you. I've pinned you down even in my dreams, I'm sure it must feel amazing. Dark Fatty snickered. Go to hell. The Heavenly Dance Battle God didn't want to prolong this any further. Her elegant postures were like the wind, seemingly without trajectory yet lunging in haste towards the Dark Fatty. Two enormous hammers appeared in the hands of the Black Diamond Demon King. Their heads were cylindrical in shape, and they were as tall as the Dark Fatty. Compared to the latter, they seemed even thicker in size. The pair of hammers were black and red in color, and in turn, with them in hand, the Dark Fatty seemed even more invincible. Heavenly Dance Battle God used a sword which was hidden in her sleeves, not usually revealed but fatal the moment it made its appearance. Her sleeves were long, so even her hands were usually hidden. Heavenly Dance Battle God, Tang Shi's movements were like a butterfly. They were as beautiful as a butterfly dance but also extremely fast. It was mystical, and she seemed to emit a subtle pollen-like scent. Ding, ding. There was a continuous sound of metal colliding, as sparks lit against the hammers. However, the other weapon of his enemy was nowhere in sight. Heavenly Dance Battle Gods danced with her long sleeves, tangling themselves against a hammer at one moment before tugging it firmly. Her speed increased multiple times. The Dark Fatty's expression changed as the other hammer spiraled out. One must admit that an enormous weapon had its advantage as did a long one, it was stronger in proportionate with each inch longer and riskier with each inch shorter. They both had individual pros and cons. The Dark Fatty managed to dodge. Heavenly Dance Battle God, Tang Shi let a smile slip when she saw the Dark Fatty's expression and exuded a pure and untainted charm, her body twirling magically. The Dark Fatty seemed captivated but soon regained his composure and retreated in haste. Thump! A gash sliced through his chest. If he hadn't retreated quickly, that sword slash would have made its mark across his throat. The dark fatty's clothes were completely drenched in cold sweat, cursing inwardly. Even a battle god from the divine palace had enchantment techniques. This dampened his mood. Young lady, I'll capture you this time and kill you. The dark fatty roared. With a wave of his hand, a gigantic demonic beast appeared. Ching Shui recognized the demonic beast and was stunned by the sight. It was a demonic dragon bat. Chapter 2385 Hao Tian's Entrance, Rock Fist. The terrifying thing about the demonic dragon bat wasn't just its ability to kill but also its horrifying ultrasound. It would have been unimaginably scary if they came in a flock. Ultrasound from the demonic dragon bat was without form, and most importantly, it could attack through any obstruction. At the sight of the demonic dragon bat, Qing Shui knew that heavenly dance battle god, Tang Shi, would lose. Their disparity in power wasn't huge at all, however, a strong presence like the demonic dragon bat had an enormous power of transmitting ultrasound. This would disrupt their opponents and was extremely effective. More importantly, it could achieve its desired effect at the very moment it was used. Tang Shi's expression shifted a little at the sight of the demonic dragon bat. Her arm extended as an enormous, sky-blue flying wolf appeared and charged towards the demonic dragon bat. At the same time, she lunged at the dark fatty. The dark fatty snickered. Without warning, the hammer in his hand collided with her wolf's skull, and the demonic dragon bat emitted a piercing cry at the same time. Heavenly Dan's battle god didn't feel the effects of it, for the cry wasn't directed at her. Its ultrasound was targeted at the wolf. Thereafter, the wolf seemed to pause for a short while. Death happened in an instant during a battle among powerful warriors. At that moment, the great hammer smashed against its skull. The black diamond demon king had immense strength, and the pair of hammers were extremely powerful as well. Without suspense, the wolf's skull was destroyed by the hits. As though it had a mind of its own, the hammer returned to the black diamond demon king. The pair of hammers had another usage, they could summon each other. Hence, 
The Black Diamond Demon King had a tendency of using them as a secret tactic to attack, kill, and obstruct. Baby, Brother Hay will dote on you today. He had a despicable smile to him. At the same time, he was well prepared, ready to attack the Heavenly Dance Battle God at any time. The demonic dragon bat let out a screeching sound towards the Heavenly Dance Battle God. In an instant, Heavenly Dance Battle God felt as though there were innumerable bees dancing in her head. The sensation couldn't be stopped even when she numbed her own senses. This was the terrifying aspect to Demonic Dragon Bat. The only way to stop it was through her own resistance or for it to stop. The Black Diamond Demon King moved. The speed of the big man was even higher than that of a cheetah. The hammer in his hands showed no tenderness at all as it smashed towards Heavenly Dance Battle God. It wasn't that he felt no tenderness towards ladies. However, compared to his own life, not even the most beautiful woman would be worth a mention. Besides, he knew that the woman in front of him wouldn't die this easily. He would leave her critically injured and secure his own safety first. Then, he could play with her as he pleased. The heavenly battle god stood rooted to the ground. She knew she shouldn't panic and was trying her best to calm down, trying to be wary of any sneak attack from the back. Her spiritual sense was weak now, so she could only rely on her sight. However, the Black Diamond Demon King could attack from various directions in just a split second. In this case, spiritual sense was crucial, it could dictate the direction of the attack quickly. The Heavenly Dance Battle God could no longer pinpoint the direction after all, and just relying on just her eyesight wasn't enough to brace herself which resulted in the Black Diamond Demon King successfully landing multiple attacks. Thump! The Heavenly Dance Battle God's body was flung aside as a fresh pool of blood sprayed from her mouth. Hao Tian had been discussing with Qing Shui for a long time, eager to step in. Finally, Qing Shui agreed. Hao Tian appeared behind the Heavenly Dance Battle God and embraced her falling figure. Tang Shi was startled and her body trembled. Right away, she placed distance between them, she had to subdue him at least. Don't move. Don't you want to kill the dark fatty? Hao Tian's words were magnetizing. Sounding beside Tang Shi's ears, it left her distracted. Just like that she stopped her actions. Be good. Wait here for me while I kill him. Be good and remember not to move. Hao Tian had Tang Shi sit at the side. His tone was gentle as if coaxing a little girl. Tang Shi's eyes widened. This was the first time she had encountered this. However, the guy seemed cheerful and gentle. Whatever she had at the tip of the tongue was kept at bay. Rascal, scram. Otherwise, this grandpa here will kill you with just a hit of my hammer. The Black Diamond Demon King watched Hao Tian as he reprimanded. This pretty boy made him feel uncomfortable, he hated anyone who was better looking than him. Hao Tian laughed. You fool. You're so dark, like a ball of black. Don't tell me you've been smeared by a pile of black dung as you were dragged along by a black dog king? Though, only black dung would be able to paint you this dark. Say, why are you embarrassing yourself? Why don't you find a hole to hide in instead? Don't you know you're embarrassing your clan members? Pfft. The heavenly dance battle god, Tang Shi let out a laugh. The words this guy was spouting were both hilarious and aggravating. The black diamond demon king felt as though his body was on fire. He couldn't wait for the moment he smashed Hao Tian's body into smithereens. Pretty boy, when this grandpa here entered society, your hair hadn't even grown out fully. Grandpa will humiliate you today. Black diamond demon king huffed in anger, secretly breathing in and out to calm himself. What is this grandson doing, shouting who's who oh wait, that's wrong. I can never give birth to such a black grandson. You don't look human at first glance, and looking up close. Hmm, you still don't look human. Arguing with others was Hao Tian's favorite thing to do. The black diamond demon king hated been called black. Although he kept telling himself to not be angry, to wait for the time to kill this pretty boy, he still couldn't help but charge upon him. Watch for my hammer. Infuriated, he smashed the hammer towards Hao Tian. You're a fool. Hao Tian swung a fist. Rock fist. It was a rock fist that was combined with berserk dragon fist. Hao Tian was a rock battle god and due to his innate abilities, the fist couldn't surpass the power of Qing Shui's berserk dragon fist. However, the power in it was still immense. Besides, the most unique part of rock fist was its speed. Thump. The heavy collision caused the huge hammer to be flung aside with the impact. Hao Tian didn't stop there, leaving a trace of a shadow as he appeared by the demonic dragon bat's side. The punches rained down upon it were like a storm with an elegant disposition. 
A perfect display of his strength and speed. Thump. The continuous sounds of collision were both powerful and rhythmic. Thereafter, the demonic dragon bat's skull was whacked out of shape, bleeding at every possible orifice. The demonic dragon bats were the most terrifying in flocks. Usually, no one would take them in as tamed beasts, as the ultrasound was only effective against those who were on PAR with their strength. Hence, only a few would take them in as pets. As riders, their speed and endurance weren't enough and neither were their attacks. They were control-type demonic beasts, and due to their body's might, it would be useless after reaching a certain level. However, the demonic dragon bat's attack had a certain resistance ability that could counter against anything. Therefore, in theory, it could attack people of any capability, or at least be able to disrupt them. Demonic dragon bats had an ultimate technique too, being able to increase their ultrasound by several folds in a short time. This couldn't last long though, but it would be enough to suppress someone of similar strength. This was why the heavenly dance battle god was affected. Hao Tian didn't give the demonic dragon bat any chance before concluding its life. The black diamond demon king snapped back to reality and realized he was no match for this pretty boy. He actually realized this the moment his fist collided with his hammer, but everything happened in a flash. Chapter 2386 Boulder City's Divine Palace and Demon Gate Bang! The huge stature of the Black Diamond Demon King and the hammers in his hand were cast aside by Hao Tian's tackle. Hao Tian's punch was extremely strong. Even with the strength of the Black Diamond Demon King's body, he was still knocked back from the former's attack. Still, it didn't seem like his injuries were critical, as he got up and fled again. At this moment, a string of spider web coiled its way around the Black Diamond Demon King and engulfed him in its net. His speed slowed, and he was soon wrapped like a dumpling. Hao Tian dusted his palms and returned. Dragon Spider had made its move, and Qing Shui appeared with their companions. Someone else captured the Black Diamond Demon King promptly. Hao Tian approached the Heavenly Dance Battle God. Are you alright? Heavenly Dance Battle God smiled. I'm fine, thank you. Hey, there's no need for that. It is my pleasure, Hao Tian ran his hand across his head and said sheepishly. Tang Shi chuckled at that. The guy in front of him was sharp and savage in his bickering earlier and yet seemed a little silly now. He felt like an honest person. Why do you say so? Tang Shi asked with a smile. I won't say. I can't. You're going to think I'm up to no good since this is my first time meeting you, so I can't say. But, can we be friends? Hao Tian asked seriously. Of course. You saved me. Not only are you my friend, but you're also my benefactor, Tang Shi responded still holding her smile. How do you plan on repaying this benefactor of yours then? Ching Shui and his companions appeared, each with a smile. Why don't you marry him? Mighty Spear Battle God suggested with a grin. Don't listen to their nonsense. Let me introduce my friends to you, they'll be your friends from now on, too. Hao Tian changed the subject in haste. Otherwise, his personal matter would have been distorted for sure. Everyone in attendance was a Battle God inheritor, except the two women. Even so, they were important members of the Divine Palace and Qing Shui's wives. Anyway, not everyone in the Divine Palace was a battle god. A gleeful grin decorated Heavenly Dance Battle God's features. I see. I felt a sense of familiarity but couldn't put a finger on it. Now I understand. This is great. Why don't you follow me to the Divine Palace? The Palace Lord would be so happy. Tang Shi seemed to realize that the leader, Qing Shui, had some questions to ask. Let's walk and talk at the same time. Soon, Qing Shui received information about Boulder City's Divine Palace. There was a Divine Palace and a Demon Gate within Boulder City, but neither were the strongest here. That said, their powers were still significant in the area. The Divine Place was at the most northeastern part of the city. According to Tang Shi, there were about 3,000 members here but with only a few dozens of battle gods. Furthermore, more than half of these battle gods were of the weaker variation. However, battle god inheritors were destined to be strong even if it would take some time. The majority would need to take it one step at a time. There was a saying that even gods in the nine continents reached their level by advancing one step at a time as humans. The palace lord of the divine palace here was an elderly person. Qing Shui saw him soon enough, a person of virtue and prestige. The benevolence and righteousness of this divine palace was widespread and known. They had great relationships with the other residents in Boulder City, and their palace lord was an exploding arrow battle god. 
Wyun Kingo was the sun shooting battle god while the elderly was an exploding arrow battle god. One could tell from the name alone exploding arrow battle god that its greatest power was in its exploding arrows. It could increase damage significantly. This was the combustion of exploding arrow battle god's origin chi, a unique application of the origin chi and its form. The target would rupture, causing a terrifying and damaging explosion. The combustion was entirely up to the control of the exploding arrow battle god. For example, he could choose the explosion to happen in advance or with a delay. The exploding arrow battle god was still horrifying, it'd be better to stay on your toes with the inheritors or risk being critically injured. Ha ha ha, thank you for saving 11 ER. We're all family. Come in, come in, I'm Yi Chang. Exploding arrow battle god warmly welcomed everyone. You're welcome, elder. Then, don't mind our intrusion. Ching Shui smiled before following Yi Cheng in, sensing the other people in the divine palace. This divine palace was impressive with an imposing architecture. It must have taken some years to its construction. After a sensing, it was worth noting that the strength at this divine palace was truly decent. There were strong battle gods, as well as a demonic beast. The demonic beast could be considered as their guardian beast, though he didn't know what it was exactly. Still, their powers must have been close to 10 trillion Dao. You're not intruding. Everyone's after the same goal after all, exploding arrow battle god responded in glee. Yes, elder. From the looks of it, this divine palace has been around for a few generations. It has indeed. However, it has waned, the divine palace used to be glorious. It is a pity, it could even take down the tiny demon gate here now. At that, exploding arrow battle god sounded powerless. Oh, elder. Could it be that the demon gate here is really strong? It's not that strong, otherwise, this divine palace of ours wouldn't be able to survive either. However, against them, we can only counter and barely so. The other party didn't wish to end up in a life and death struggle with us either. If it really comes down to that, the divine palace would be destroyed if we can't counter their attacks. The demon gate would suffer immensely as well and lose many of their comrades. This would only end up in them retaining their name but losing in reality. Hence, we're fine at this moment, but we're passive. Exploding arrow battle god didn't cover up anything. Ching Shui could understand the bigger picture now and nodded. Elder, if there's a need, we can help. Watching Ching Shui smile, exploding arrow battle god mimicked it. While the latter wasn't mighty, his sight was. He could tell that Ching Shui's power wasn't anything to scoff at, and he was the leader. More importantly, he could clearly feel existences among them who were stronger than himself. I wonder how long Mr. Ching would stay in Boulder City. Exploding Arrow Battle God didn't continue their conversation. I was just passing by Boulder City today and coincidentally saw Miss Tang Shi and the Black Diamond Demon King. We won't stay here for long. Since we've bumped into Demon Gate here, I really wish to fight. Ching Shui didn't cover up either. Mr. Ching really wishes to fight against the Demon Gate. Exploding Arrow Battle God asked after a moment of hesitance. My initial plan was to seek the Nine Continents Divine Palace and join them if possible. At Ching Shi's words, Exploding Arrow Battle God fell into a deep pondering. There wasn't much of a future for the Divine Palace here, he knew that. If the Demon Gate continued to exist, then the Divine Palace might really be destroyed by them one day. The most important thing about the Nine Continents was survival. One must first consider survival before development. Regarding development, the greater the expansion, the better. However, everything will be expanded from its foundation so there was a limit. It went without saying that there were exceptions as well, there were those who grew rapidly, but they were rare and few. Elder, I understand your concerns. I will annihilate the demon gate, and you all can remain here. Perhaps we would meet again one day. Ching Shui understood that a palace lord's decision was important. They couldn't be ignorant or trust in others this easily. Many thanks. Exploding Arrow Battle God replied seriously. Chapter 2387 Transforming Ox-Headed Bios Although Ching Shui had claimed that he wanted to attack the Demon Gate, he wouldn't just charge towards them straight away. Niu Lan sought out information regarding the depth of the Demon Gate. Besides, he knew that the Exploding Arrow Battle God didn't trust Ching Shui that much. Ching Shui understood the Divine Palace's behavior completely. This was good too. If it hadn't been this way, Ching Shui might have had doubts about their survival instead. Are you thinking of your Miss Tang Shi again? Ching Shui approached after seeing how dispirited Hao Tian was. 
Let's attack the demon gate slowly. Otherwise, I won't be able to see Tang Shi once we leave. Hao Tian's eyes lit up as he turned to Qing Shui. You should hasten your progress. Perhaps Tang Shi will follow us when it's time to leave. Qing Shui smiled. Will she? Hao Tian's eyes brightened even more. It's possible. The Divine Palace has limited area for growth. Tang Shi is the heavenly dance battle god, her potential is the greatest in this city's Divine Palace. Qing Shui knew that the heavenly dance battle god was extremely strong in ancient times, and so he thought Tang Shi would likely leave one day, he just wasn't sure if they would be the reason for it. Three days passed quickly. Niu Lan received much information about the Demon Gate as well and reported to Qing Shui. You're saying that the Demon Gate has an even more powerful guardian beast, and one that has been constantly improving? In that case, it will be able to destroy Divine Palace in 80 years or perhaps a century's time. Qing Shui frowned at that. He knew that the Divine Palace had a guardian beast as well with nearly 10 trillion Dao of might. If the guardian beast at the Demon Gate was stronger, then what was it? Just how strong was it? At that moment, Niu Lan continued. The Demon Gate's guardian beast is a transforming ox-headed beast. Qing Shui froze at the words. The ancient ox-headed beast was already an unfamiliar creature on its own, much less a transforming one. There were things which transformed in the nine continents and they were usually even stronger after this process. Their aptitude, innate skills, and battle techniques would all increase significantly, surpassing the other creatures of the same type. The ancient ox-headed beast had weaker and stronger variations as well, just like humans. Those which could transform were definitely skillful among them. Their innate abilities were already the cream of the crop and with the transformation skills, they could fling any ordinary ancient ox-headed beast down ten streets. The transforming ox-headed beast's abilities should be stronger than those of the guardian beast at the Divine Palace by a little. If not, the Divine Palace wouldn't have been able to counter it. Qing Shui still hadn't made a move on the Demon Gate. Niu Lan found Qing Shui in the morning and smiled. The Demon Gate has arrived at the Divine Palace. Seems like a battle is about to begin. Qing Shui couldn't help asking. Could it be about the Black Diamond Demon King? Qing Shui could only correlate those two incidents. Even if there were other reasons, he wouldn't be able to guess it. Hmm. The Divine Palace killed the Black Diamond Demon King. He deserved it though, there's no grievance even if a degenerate like him was killed a hundred times over. Killing him is letting him off easy, Niu Lan said. Let's take a look. Since we've already declared our motives for attacking the Demon Gate, then let us go now. I was going to wait a few days, but it seems that's not needed now, we can leave after we deal with this. Qing Shui stood up with a smile. Ignorant old man, hand over to Hei and we'll pretend nothing happened, a tall and well-built elder stood at the entrance of Divine Palace and shouted. The elder was dressed in a black robe, his eyes being the most striking feature. He seemed as ruthless as wolves and tigers, apart from his nose which tipped towards the sky like a pig's snout. I say, you seem like a tiger yet not, like a wolf yet not, but you're really a pig. Scram. Don't embarrass yourself here the exploding arrow battle god laughed. Come, come. Don't cause disputes through gossip. If you don't hand him over, I'll destroy the divine palace, the elderly roared. I'm more afraid you wouldn't. What's the hey? A big black dog, the exploding arrow battle god feigned ignorance. Since you have a death wish, then I the three perfections demon king shall grant it to you, the elderly said coldly. Master Ox, I will have to trouble you. The elderly turned back and spoke politely. At that time, a three-meter-tall human silhouette appeared. There wasn't any difference between its body and that of a human, but it had a formidable ox head. The ox head was more ferocious than that of a buffalo or a bull. There were two strange horns on its head, but they weren't like an ox's. The creature was short yet thick and sturdy. It's fine, don't worry, the transforming ox-headed beast said confidently. The Three Perfections Demon King smiled gleefully. He held a triaged pitchfork on his left hand and a broken blade in the other. It wasn't a sword nor a dagger. It emitted a faint white glow, and was incomparably chilly. The exploding arrow battle god calmly took out a silver great bow. The bow was huge, about two meters long, with a body as thick as a man's wrist. Looking at the quality, it must have been made from a strong demonic beast's bones, and the bowstring from its veins were as big as fingers. He fixed a bone arrow, resting upon the bowstring. However, at this moment, a voice rang out, saying, Hold on. The owner of the voice belonged to Qing Shui as his group rushed over. 
Who are you? Leave quickly and don't get yourself involved in this. Otherwise, your lives might get mixed up in it. Three perfections Demon King said, displeased. Mr. Ching, could it be that you all, exploding arrow battle god laughed. Ching Shui nodded. We were the ones who said that we want to destroy the demon gate, so naturally, we should do it. I had been planning to wait for a few more days, but who knew you were in such a hurry? Rather than arranging a fixed time, we might as well do it now since we've run into them. Ching Shui smiled. The three perfections demon king's eyes widened. He had thought that he must have heard wrong. He watched Ching Shui in disbelief. What did you say? You want to destroy us? Ching Shui nodded without a hint of joke. Yes. Oh ha ha. Young man, your joke isn't funny the three perfections demon king burst out laughing. Not just the three perfections demon king, the others began laughing as well. To them, Ching Shui's words were hilarious, like a kindergartner declaring to Hercules that they would defeat the latter. Is it funny? You're going to cry in a bit. Ching Shui looked at the other party and smiled. Without restraint. All right, since you are bent on interfering, then we'll send you on your way. Sect leader, there's no need to waste a knife for cows on a chicken. I say, a slaughter knife for pigs should be enough in this case a man said. Say, da dun, isn't the butcher's knife for cows and pigs the same? Rubbish. One is for pigs and the other for cows, of course they're not the same. The three perfections demon king nodded. The man walked over, holding a one-handed hammer. Hey, come on. My hammer is thirsty. I'll show you the greatness of it. Before Ching Shui could move as he observed the man who was almost as wide as he was tall, Hao Tian stepped forward. I'll deal with you, fatty. Hmm. You're just as ugly, just as ugly as that dark fatty. With Hao Tian's words, there were several who laughed. Ching Shui laughed but didn't move. It wasn't a bad idea to let them train through a battle like this. Hao Tian's eagerness had to do with Tang Shi's presence as well. Chapter 2388 Gloomy Three Perfections Demon King Killing Demon Gate Sect Leader in a Split Second The opponent's speed surprised Hao Tian. Ching Shui didn't lend any assistance to Hao Tian this time around, he couldn't assist every single time. Being reliant on Ching Shui's abilities wasn't a good thing. After all, he wouldn't be there to help out all the time. Rock Spreading Wings? Hao Tian's speed increased significantly. There was a subtle silhouette of a rock behind him. The fatty's hammers were huge, way too broad and long. His figure was almost completely obstructed by the hammer as both smashed towards Hao Tian with immense power. It seemed like they had locked onto him. Rock thunderous hammer? The sound that rang out was between a chirp and thunder. It wasn't piercing and instead, was even melodic. At the same time, Hao Tian's arm transformed into a huge hammer. Thunder hammer? This was the legendary thunder hammer, the one wielded by the thunder god. However, it was like only a shadow of it was left. One would be able to make out its shape vaguely, but it was engulfed with bolt after bolt of lightning, frantically charging towards the fat man. Meanwhile, the latter seemed to sense danger. The hammer in his hand emitted a bright glow and remained unchanged. In fact, it seemed to be even more powerful as it swung towards its target. The sky suddenly turned hazy and the howling gusts of wind filled their surroundings. Boom! The loud sound of collisions reverberated along with the dull thunder as a cloud of smoke was formed. Hao Tian and the fat man both retreated backwards from the impact, but soon charged towards each other again. Hao Tian was slightly faster, but the fat man's movements were more agile and with his long weapons, the latter wasn't at all inferior. Hao Tian's rock fist was much stronger than before. It had taken on several good points and become Hao Tian's foundation. He could use this one skill and take over the world which was why Hao Tian had placed all his energy on the rock fist. Thump, thump. The sound of collision filled the air without pause. Hao Tian's rock fist had an element of Taiki and even Yu Emperor fist. It could weaken some strength and increase his own attacks. That was the effect of the berserk dragon fist. The speed of rock fist had been exceptionally quick on its own. Thump. Seizing the opportunity when he spotted a weakness, Hao Tian landed a punch on the fat man's left shoulder lunging forward and landing yet another fist on the same position. Snap! The strength of the fists was strong and without holding back, snapped the fat man's bones. He didn't retract his punch. Instead, with a quick move, it landed on the fat man's temple. Bang! While the attack wasn't strong, the temple was an exceptionally weak part of a human, no matter how strong a warrior was. At this moment, 
The fat man felt a pain worse than death in his head as a trace of blood made its mark at the corner of his lips, striking with the elbow. This was a chain attack. The man retreated instinctively but Hao Tian's speed was too quick. With a lunge of his body once more and a curve of his arm, a trace of shadow was left behind. Bang! The hit landed on the man's nose. The immense force and impact had broken the man's neck as well. The man was the Demon Gate's demonic hammer Demon King. He had decent potential, but his life had come to an end. The Three Perfections Demon King made his move the moment Hao Tian had struck his final attack. He was the Three Perfections Demon King before him, who had three forms of perfections, one of which was speed. Inevitably, this meant that his speed was exceptional. The Three Perfections Demon King charged towards Hao Tian, where he was quick, someone else was even quicker. Ching Shui appeared in front of Hao Tian in an instant. The Three Perfections Demon King raised the weapon in his hand, entering Ching Shui's attack distance. Stellar transposition? Ching Shui struck without hesitance. With about 13 trillion Dao of defense, he was curious about how terrifying an attack which negated all defense would be. A ray of magnificent white, a chain of bright light which seemed to turn into silver. In that moment, the beauty of a resplendent light left everyone stunned. It was as though they were witnessing the actual Milky Way dawning upon them right then. There wasn't a sound. As the sound of attack which emerged was simply too soft, the world seemed to have quieted down for a while. The sect leader of Demon Gate, the Three Perfections Demon King had already vanished. For a long while, it was as though no one had realized the issue. The sect leader of the Boulder City's Demon Gate had been killed in a second without ever unleashing his own attacks. No one thought that he would still be alive, Ching Shui's attack was too shocking. Even Ching Shui was taken aback by his own attack. Stellar transposition had always just been a ray of white light, and the visual of its attack was never this magnificent. However, it was like a Milky Way now. Of course, he hadn't expected the Milky Way to be as big as the one in the sky, but it bore a resemblance. The difference in size was inevitable but the charm it held was still surprising. In that instant, Ching Shui shifted his attention to the transforming ox-headed beast. Now, the others from the Demon Gate were trembling with fear. The Three Perfections Demon King was killed in a second. Even with the combined courage of the few of them, no one dared to fight against Ching Shui. Ox Head Ching Shui observed the ox-headed beast. It held similarities to the ox heads in legends from his previous life, it held a thick iron chain. Ching Shui recalled that the horse-faced should be the one with the iron chain. Young lad, you're strong. Even so, your previous attack should have a limit, right? If you can unleash one more right now, then I'll keep my hands down and receive it. Ox head stared with its huge pair of ox eyes. This fellow was smart indeed. It was a pity that it was wrong. Ching Shui speculated that the opponent would have guessed that his stellar transposition could only be used once a day, or maybe even once every few days. After all, its attack powers were too great. Not only did the transforming ox-headed beast guess this wrong, it also was wrong about the estimation of Ching Shui's defense. It's true that I can't use it immediately, but there's only two endings for you today, either surrender or be killed by me. Ching Shui smiled. If you can defeat me without the previous attack, then I'll let you punish me as you deem fit. The transforming ox-headed beast's eyes turned round and round. I can agree to this. Be careful then. Ching Shui smiled as he attacked with the dragon capturing hands efficiently. The dragon capturing hands were in a swatting motion this time round. Smack. The slap landed on the transforming ox-headed beast's head, stunning them. However, the attack power of the dragon capturing hands wasn't much and would only achieve a dizzying effect. One inch punch. His hands curled into a fist as they smoothly glided down to the transforming ox-headed beast's chest and leapt into the simple attack. However, the transforming ox-headed beast's dizziness lasted for way too short a time, having sobered up by that moment. It was way too careless previously and its stature created a trace as it appeared beside Ching Shui. The iron chain in its hands turned grey, coiling its way towards Ching Shui like a dragon. Thump! At the same time, the transforming ox-headed beast stomped its feet. Paths began to spread rhythmically towards all four directions, even to the skies above and the ground beneath. Mighty Earth Crack. This was one of transforming ox-headed beast's terrifying abilities. Ching Shui knew one too, the Mighty Earth Stomp. That said, the transforming ox-headed beast's variation seemed even more exquisite. Ching Shui actually found himself developing vertigo. Chapter 2389 3 Inches Divine Soldier Soaring Blade, 
ox-headed beasts surrender. When the chain wrapped its way around Qing Shui, he felt it immediately that it wasn't anything ordinary. It was extremely tough. Qing Shui attempted to break it by force but failed. It didn't end there either. Qing Shui could feel the chain getting tighter by the minute, as though it wanted to bind him until he snapped. Haha, don't think about struggling anymore. This is a soul-attracting chain. If trapped by it, you'd be bound to death even if you were a god the transforming ox-headed beast laughed, proud of his own work. Qing Shui's body was strong enough to resist the soul-attracting chain's constant binding temporarily. This weapon was like a living snake. If your body contracted with your breaths, then it'd take the opportunity to bind even tighter. This was truly the result of being careless. No, this was the result of him underestimating the transforming ox-headed beast's powers. This soul-attracting chain was truly a strange weapon. Dragon-slaying beast? Qing Shui didn't know what else he could do and thought of using the dragon-slaying beast's sharp horns. It was said that those could break apart a divine artifact. He wondered if it could break apart this soul-attracting chain. The dragon-slaying beast now had 15% of primordial bloodline, and its powers were much stronger than before. The dragon-slaying beast understood Qing Shui's words and used its spiral sharp horns to attack the soul-attracting chain immediately. Thereafter, it spun its body like a top. The soul-attracting chain was truly unusual. The dragon-slaying beast's horn had broken apart many things but had met its match now. They could hear the sharp sound of friction and see dust from the soul-attracting chain, but at this rate, it would require a few days to break it. The dragon-slaying beast seemed displeased by the situation at hand and bit the soul-attracting chain. Qing Shui wasn't in time to stop it and could only hear a loud, crisp sound. It didn't break, but a piece of it was chipped off. The speed of its current progress was quick. At this rate, it wouldn't take long before it could snap the soul-attracting chain. The transforming ox-headed beast regarded the soul-attracting chain as a treasure. Watching it get chipped from the bite was a greater heartache than witnessing the death of the Demon Gates sect leader. He didn't feel much about the latter. Stop, stop, stop. The transforming ox-headed beast hastily stopped the progress before retrieving the soul-attracting chain. This was his weapon and a divine artifact. Its powers were formidable and he never expected to meet something which could bite through the soul-attracting chain. Berserk Dragon Fist? Qing Shui appeared before the transforming ox-headed beast and struck. Even though it had already controlled its height, the transforming ox-headed beast was still over three meters tall. Its body was his capital and as he saw Qing Shui's fist, he struck back without hesitance. Its fist was no smaller than a human head. Thump! A dull sound of collision rang out. Qing Shui didn't move and hadn't retreated from the impact. He didn't suffer any damage either. The divine soldier soaring blades weakening had caused his opponent's strength to not surpass his own. Naturally, with that amount of strength, it wouldn't be as strong as Qing Shui and wouldn't be able to shake him up. Gouging strike? Qing Shui's palms were extremely agile. Complementing it with his movements, the attack against the sturdy body struck with a bang. This time, the effect of vertigo lasted a little longer but only for two blinks of an eye. Mountain push stance? Qing Shui used a seemingly cumbersome technique this time. The mountain push stance was a skill which concealed its true capabilities. Boom! Its profound and horrifying power was like being crushed by a mountain. The transforming ox-headed beast was forced back by the strength. At first, he had wanted to counter against Qing Shui's strength, but he kept retreating despite it. Naturally, he wouldn't be able to resist against this mountain push stance and was pushed back in a sorry state. If he was crushed by this mountain push stance, it'd be over for him. Qing Shui wouldn't let this opportunity go to waste. He struck with the combination techniques. Once the combination techniques were unleashed, they would attack in chains, breaking the target's balance, attacking its weaknesses and throwing them in a fluster. The continuous techniques were endless. Thump! Qing Shui's one-inch punch landed near the kidneys, almost making the transforming ox-headed beast fall apart. In an instant, its body turned into a huge ox-headed beast which stood over 10 meters in height. It was strong and muscular with two thick legs. One leg stumped towards Qing Shui in anger. Wind Whisk Willow? Qing Shui deduced that it would take quite a long time for them to fight with just their fists and kicks. With a shift of his mind, the Divine Soldier Soaring Blade made its appearance. Swish! Pft! The speed of the Divine Soldier Soaring Blade increased significantly as Qing Shui's powers did. This was also partly due to the support given from the cave's dantian. 
It penetrated one of transforming ox-headed beast's legs. The transforming ox-headed beast glanced at the three-inch long sword. Yes, three inches. Ching Shui's divine soldier soaring blade was that size now. He had once thought that the bigger the size, the better, but he saw the errors of his mindset now. The divine soldier soaring blade became smaller with increasing power. It was now only three inches long, with a sturdy and incredibly sharp body. The penetration left the transforming ox-headed beast in immense pain, but the damage wasn't too much. Yet, Ching Shui smiled. I've severed off a tendon this time round. Next time, it will cut through your bones. Ching Shui had the ability to do as he said. It did sever off the transforming ox-headed beast's tendon previously and the fact made the latter afraid. What if it penetrated through his heart or throat? Stop, stop. I lose. I'm willing to serve you. Transforming ox-headed beast shouted frantically. Ching Shui didn't expect the chance to tame the transforming ox-headed beast to come so easily. However, it had a human form and it was different from demonic beasts. It was said that the nine continents had ox-headed humans. It was good to have something this strong serving him, so Ching Shui agreed. With him around, the transforming ox-headed beast wouldn't dare to be rash. Soul suppression? This was one of Ching Shui's ten caves abilities. It was like a divine sense, locking onto the transforming ox-headed beast, making it impossible for him to betray Ching Shui. This ability made sure that it was impossible for servants to betray their owners and wouldn't affect them in any other way. In fact, they wouldn't even know about this divine sense. This was the most relaxed ritual. After all, non-betrayal was the most basic thing so this ritual didn't amount to much. Following this, the people at Demon Gate knew that they were done for. They left it up to the Divine Palace to handle things from here. Without the three perfections Demon King and the transforming ox-headed beast, the Demon Gate was doomed. The exploding arrow battle god spoke gleefully to Ching Shui. Your ambitions lie in the nine continents, as do a few of the people I have here. I know you won't be able to stay here and become our palace lord, but I wonder if you could pick some of the people present to see the world and contribute to the divine palace. Ching Shui smiled. Elder, you're too modest. There are many inheritors of the divine palace and you could fight against the demon gate anywhere. They each have their own usage. Since Elder shows such great regard, then I'll bring along two people. I can't possibly leave you as a leader to none. All right, two then. Take a look and see who will be suitable. Exploding arrow battle god snickered. Hao Tian, why don't you decide? Your judgment is better. Ching Shui smiled. Hao Tian looked towards Ching Shui in surprise before giving him a thumbs up. You're truly a brother. Hao Tian put on an act and walked around before finally stopping in front of Tang Shi. Miss Eleven ER, would you want to go with me? Chapter 2390 Fox Wolf Sky Mountain A Pack of Wolf Kings I do. Tang Shi felt her cheeks heating up right after her words. She didn't know why it was all she had thought about previously. There had been many suitors over the years, but none who she had taken an interest in. Perhaps fate had finally knocked on her door. This man lent a helping hand at the most crucial moment and she found herself remembering him. It was an indescribable feeling, but it was definitely a great feeling. She knew it was important and was ready to try. Although Hao Tian had seen an inkling of desire in Tang Shi to follow them, he was still nervous when he asked, especially since there was a hint of ambiguity behind his words. However, upon hearing her answer, along with her expression, Hao Tian was agitated. Clasping both hands together, he bent at his waist and said, Thank you. Tang Shi smiled after being startled for a short moment, but she was even more embarrassed now. It really wasn't easy to meet someone who returned your feelings and she distinctively felt that this was fate. The exploding arrow battle god laughed and said, Young lad, not bad at all. Our 11 ER has never taken interest in any men all these years. You better treasure her. Don't worry, elder. I'll care for her as I would my own heart, Ha Tian answered seriously. Ching Shui was stunned. This phrase was the same as one from his previous life, a mushy phrase that claimed the other person was their darling. Tang Shi's face was flushed beet red. At this moment, Bai Huang Fan approached her and held her. Their business here was almost done now. Several members of the Divine Palace were envious of Hao Tian. The most beautiful lady of the Divine Palace had been claimed just like that. Hao Tian didn't bother choosing the last person to bring along, causing Tang Shi to stare wide-eyed at him once again. He was being too obvious, choosing anyone was better than choosing no one. At last, Tang Shi was the only one who chose to leave, 
leaving the remaining slot empty. Tang Shi didn't have any relatives here and while she had friends, they weren't close. This was because there were far too few women at the Divine Palace and the men all had a motive. Although they didn't do anything overboard Tang Shi had chosen to live independently and stayed solo. She dedicated all her time to train. Tang Shi bid the exploding arrow battle god and the others farewell, seemingly reluctant to part. Among everyone, she had the closest relationship with the exploding arrow battle god, like father and daughter. The elderly battle god had also taken care of her as he would his own daughter. Even though they hadn't lingered for long, it was time to leave. The exploding arrow battle god and the others sent Qing Shui on their way out of Boulder City. Qing Shui's faction had now added the heavenly dance battle god. Tang Shi, who had just joined them, was curious about everything. For example, people like Shen Huang and Bai Huang Fan. Knowing they were both Qing Shui's wives was also shocking to her. To her, Qing Shui wasn't striking, and wasn't a match to Hao Tian in terms of appearance. Qing Shui seemed gentle and reserved but had the extreme yang body. Perhaps beauty was really in the eye of the beholder. She had set her sights on Hao Tian and naturally thought him as decent. Even so, comparing herself to Bai Huang Fan and Shen Huang, she did find herself lacking. She had always had an inferiority complex, but the sight of the two women shocked her. She didn't expect that anyone could be this beautiful and flawless. Qing Shui contributed much towards Hao Tian's happiness. He gave Hao Tian a few of his own medicinal pills and had him pass them on to Tang Shi. One must seize the opportunity when the time was ripe. Gifting these things didn't mean much, but it was a gesture. It was just like giving accessories in his previous life. However, those accessories weren't valuable in the Nine Continents. The Nine Continents were based on power, hence, the items Qing Shui gave Hao Tian were akin to the exorbitant diamond rings from his previous life. Qing Shui didn't plan on visiting every single location as it would be a difficult ideal to accomplish. From the exploding arrow battle god, he got to know that there weren't any divine palaces and demon gates here. The Forsaken Earth region's city had a demon gate but didn't have a divine palace. It was said that the latter was destroyed 300 years ago. Hence, Qing Shui decided to approach the region's city and take a look. Where there was a demon gate, his thoughts would drift to Tantai Linjian. He really hoped she'd be there but was disappointed every time. Even so, he knew they'd meet again someday. He didn't allow himself to think about her. If he thought too much about her, his heart would only ache and he would grow impatient to meet her again. Yet, he was afraid of facing the look on her face when she didn't remember him. He still couldn't forget the scene of her swinging her sword and stabbing him. He didn't blame her, but he was afraid she would blame herself if she ever recalled everything she had done. The journey was peaceful. The group of people traversed as though they were sightseeing each day as they trained. From time to time, they would shop around random cities, striking a balance between work and rest. This was experience and it was important. Rather than reading thousands of books, one might as well walk thousands of miles. Cultivators had great demands when it came to experience. They could widen their mindset and see the world in this way, increasing their knowledge, realm, and vision. Fox Wolf Sky Mountain they arrived in exactly a month's time. The distance between their position and the region's city wasn't far. Huge mountains surrounded the area with a horizon filled by mountain forests. The sounds of birds chirping and beasts crying were endless, their dull yet powerful noise reaching them from a great distance away. Tang Shi was the one who told them this was the Fox Wolf Sky Mountain. It's called the Fox Wolf Sky Mountain because of the Sky Foxes and Wolf Kings. Tang Shi said as she observed their surroundings. Sky foxes and wolf kings. Qing Shui mimicked her movements. Hmm. It is said that formidable sky foxes and wolf kings appear in intervals. Some would even be able to reach the peak of the nine continents. Of course, this isn't the only place with sky foxes and wolf kings. In fact, it's one of the smaller branches but it seems to have a bell spirit of heaven and earth, producing several formidable sky foxes and wolf kings. Tang Shi seemed to know a lot about the fox wolf sky mountain. Out of the blue, Qing Shui thought of the woman at the Divine Rain sect and her senior. He wondered if they originated from here. At that thought, Qing Shui could feel the changes to their surroundings. The slight change made Qing Shui feel as if they had stepped into a trap. Qing Shui frowned and watched their surroundings, startled. Could there be such a coincidence? Was that poison wolf king really here? Or could it be that it had been watching their every move? A swarm of jade emperor bees flew out. 
These Jade Emperor bees were also scouting bees, but Ching Shui had never used this ability of theirs. After so many years, the number of Jade Emperor bees had multiplied. He had only hundreds of them initially but now had tens of thousands. Ching Shui could see every single grass blade and flower after releasing the Jade Emperor bees. Ching Shui didn't say much and summoned the Dragon Slaying Beast, Dragon Spider, Primordial Dragon Elephant and Transforming Ox-Headed Beast, placing them on guard against potential threats around them. In addition, he established a formation as a precaution. Ching Shui truly didn't underestimate his opponents at any moment now. In the past, he would claim that he understood and know of this importance, but had never managed to do it. Soon, Ching Shui was stunned. From the Jade Emperor Bees, he saw a horde of wolf kings. The majority of them took the shape of humans and were all young, good-looking men. These people were discussing about Ching Shui and his people now. 